Today in the Fresh Brewing Club, three tips for the Detroit Free Press Marathon. Welcome back to the Fresh Brewing Club. So for today's video, I'm going to give my three tips for the Detroit Free Press Marathon. So I made a video about the new course that I'm very excited about for the Detroit International Half and International Full Marathon. I'm personally running the International Half Marathon. I'm just looking to get out there and have fun. I'm definitely not gonna set a PR. I've been sort of half-heartedly training, but I'm looking forward to getting out there. One of the comments on my video, which I will link in the description below, uh, just asked for some tips. So I decided to turn my reply to KT the Boss 845 into a full video and give my three best tips for running the Detroit Free Press Marathon. So for the first tip, we're gonna start with a little bit of race strategy. Now this goes without saying, but I think it's especially important for the Detroit Free Press Marathon. You wanna make sure you run your pace at the beginning. So at a marathon, this is my greatest problem. I always get too amped up. I'm too excited, the adrenaline's going. My first mile, I remember there was one year I ran the, the half marathon, I think. My first mile was like a six minute mile and I was trying to run an eight minute mile pace and it was not great. So the marathon is in October, which means it's gonna be dark and a little bit cold in the morning. So not only can I not feel my body, I can't see my body. So it's almost like you're in this out of body experience at the beginning of the race where you have no idea how fast you're going, you're amped up, your adrenaline is going, and all of a sudden you've run two minutes faster of a pace than you really should have run. This is especially devastating in the Detroit Marathon because at about mile two, you start to go on the incline for the Ambassador Bridge. So you, you start out, you go down Fort Street, I believe, and then you kind of go on this like loop to go onto the bridge. And that's about just under a mile of an uphill. So if you spend the first two miles going at an insane pace because you're too amped up, that, that second mile is, is going to destroy you. And it's not a great feeling when your race is already over and you're not gonna hit your pace at like mile three, which I've been there and, and trust me, you don't wanna do that. So it's just basic marathon advice, run your pace, no matter how slow it feels, it's your pace is going to feel slower just because your adrenaline is, is pumping. Just run your pace, sort it out later, don't try to go too fast because the Ambassador Bridge will destroy you and you'll have an awful day and you'll be miserable and you'll regret it for an entire calendar year. Not that I have any experience in that. So for my second tip, the race itself is an international race. So you cross a border twice actually. So you need to carry some form of international identification, whether it's a passport or an enhanced ID. Um, I, I personally carry the enhanced ID card. Most people will probably carry a passport. I am constantly paranoid when I run this race of dropping my ID card or my passport or whatever I were, were to bring. So my little trick for making sure I don't lose my ID off the Ambassador Bridge, uh, dropping it into the Detroit River and then sending it into Lake Erie and then ending up on the shores of Cleveland, Ohio, is I like to use a Ziploc bag. So this is what a Ziploc bag looks like. Um, this is a passport for an example. Um, what I like to do is I will obviously put the passport in the Ziploc bag, seal it up, fold it, and then I will safety pin the Ziploc bag to the inside of my shorts pocket. I, I do recommend running um, with with pockets in your shorts if you can. Um, if you don't have a, a zipper that can, can close the pocket, um, I definitely recommend uh, doing the, the safety pins on the inside of it so that uh, you don't lose it. There is a chance that you could get pulled off the course by the Border Patrol. Um, so, you know, if that happens, your time is gonna be shot anyway. So, you know, you can take your time undoing uh, the, the safety pins uh, for the Ziploc. The most important thing for me is making sure that I don't drop it, like I said, off the Ambassador Bridge or drop it in Canada and then get stuck at the border and then I think I just have to live in Canada for the rest of my life. So yeah, so that's my advice for making sure you don't lose your identification on the course, the old Ziploc bag trick. And finally, speaking of pockets, one thing to keep in mind, this year's race only has one station where there is energy gels. Sometimes during the race, there will be people um, that will be handing out energy gels sort of like on their own, like uncertified. Like sometimes, um, like I think the Wayne State like track team has handed out stuff like that. I wouldn't depend on that. So really the only time you're gonna get those energy gels is at just after mile 16. It's like mile 16.2 or something. Um, so highly recommend you wear pockets and bring your own energy gels. Like I said, I have seen sort of unsanctioned uh, people handing out uh, handing out energy gels, but uh, make sure you bring your own. You, you don't want to depend on um, the chance that someone might be handing out energy gels. Also, I don't know, seems kind of strange to just 
accept energy gels from random people on the sides of uh, the street, but hey, that's up to you. So the other thing to keep in mind, at mile 16, it is goo and it's triberry, salted caramel, and vanilla bean, which as someone who can only tolerate chocolate outrage as a flavor, uh, another great reason to bring your own. If you don't like those three flavors, uh, make sure you, you bring your own something that you can actually literally stomach because uh, vanilla bean and salted caramel uh, have to be two of the grossest tasting things um, in existence. I'll give a pass to Triberry, but uh, still, that flavor is not good. Chocolate Outrage, that's the only way to go. So, those are my three tips for running the Detroit Free Press Marathon International Edition. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely reach out below. I've run, if you have any questions, definitely reach out. So I've run the full marathon, the half marathon, and then a leg of the, the relay. I ran the final leg, which started on Belle Isle and then ended at the finish line. So if you have any questions, I've run it a few times. I'm happy to provide any advice or additional tips or anything else you want to know. Um, again, I'm excited to, to try out the brand new course. It's new for both uh, the half and the full marathon. So I'm um, excited to, uh, to get out there. I haven't looked at the weather yet, but hopefully it's uh, a nice crispy October Sunday morning. So that is today's video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you soon. The most important thing for me is to make sure I don't drop it Come on, cat.